Welcome back, my wandering and pondering friends. For those of you who are new, my name is Bill, and my friend Glenn Dougal will pop in here any second now. Say hi, Glenn. Well, it's been more than a minute, but I wanted to catch up with you all. So June was a very busy month for me, and with that, I didn't get a lot of video work in. Uh, but hopefully you did see Joey Chestnut, a uh, little short video on a squirrel. June was also my birthday month. Turned the big 6-0. So I got to celebrate, went out, uh, two close friends locally, and one of my brothers, John, came up to visit as well. I got two brothers, uh, the other brother's Michael. And so we just went out for pizza and beer. Had a nice time. Um, and then... Brother John and I went hiking up at Bowman State Park and then up to uh, Berry Hill uh, Fire Tower. So check that out. So we're somewhere in New York City on something called the Tower Road. And I got one of my friends, actually probably my oldest friend, like he knew me before I knew me. Because I didn't think, I didn't, I don't know when I had consciousness as a baby. But my brother John and Kobe Jack. Kobe Jack. And we're on an adventure. Hey y'all. <laughs> little camera shy. Are you camera shy? That's because he wants to be leader of the pack. Well, we made it to the top of Berry Hill Fire Tower. Well, Colby didn't. Colby's down <laughs> below. <laughs> he was with Warren the steward, making friends. So later in June, uh, we did the VM workshop out in Columbus, Ohio. And some of you may remember that uh, I ended up being the chair for that, uh, which was a, a lot of work, but a, a lot of fun as well. Uh, we had a great event. Um, good turnout, lots of great sessions, uh, including I, I did my Bit Talks with Friends session. Um, just a, a session where I sit down with three people and hear their, their stories. Uh, some great tidbits in there uh, about life lessons, not just for IT, but, but in general. So I'll put a link in the description on that. Now, one of the things with that, we not only recorded that session, but, but other sessions as well. And... Uh, so one of the time-consuming things is I like the closed captions to be accurate and with all that IT terminology that was a little bit more work so that took me down another bunny trail trying to figure out uh, different services or tools to help with the transcription to make that a little bit easier so I'm actually going to experiment with some of that on this video some of the tools I found there and uh, let you know how that that turns out or maybe you'll let me know how that turns out I know a number of you do listen to uh, the, or Listen to, watch the transcriptions. So we're at that point in the video where it's time for you all to guess where I might be. Any ideas? Pond over there. Lots of woods. Here's another hint. Yeah, so I'm at Hawkins Pond Nature Area, part of the Broome County Park System. It's also kind of cool because it's connected to Hawkins Pond State Forest. Uh, so a lot of trails between the two areas. Uh, nice little area here. So back in February, we lost a good man, uh, a man who was a, a role model for me. Uh, Cloyd Price, better known as Buck, uh, passed away in February. 
he, uh, he coached my sister, Michelle, in basketball. Uh, she was part of a, his undefeated team. Uh, ended up going to the Plaster in Philadelphia, which uh, I went along. Um, as a nine-year-old kid, that was pretty huge back then. I made a big trip down there. And uh, he also coached my brother John in football. Uh, Buck coached uh, the running backs and the defensive backs. And so uh, going to my brother's games, um, I would see Buck there. I also would uh, hang out often with his son, Mike, uh, and became good friends with him. And Buck also taught high school uh, social studies and history. And so uh, knew him from that as well. Buck was also my first real boss, like with a, like a W-2 form. Uh, so Buck was the director of the uh, North Penn YMCA day camp over at Fisher's Pool. Um, and I worked as a, a counselor for him uh, three or four summers. And so we were allowed to call him Buck at camp, but he made it pretty clear that come first day of school, it better be Coach Price or Mr. Price again. And he was a good boss. Um, there were some things, some predicaments I got into that wasn't sure how he was going to take, but he always took it well. And uh, he made sure we had fun, but also uh, got, got the job done. So when I'm making these videos, I often think about Buck. See, Buck and uh, another role model of mine, Daryl Smith, uh, who's my wrestling coach, the two of them taught a class together called Seminar. I think it was in our 11th grade, 12th grade maybe. In any case, it was a combination of English and social studies and history. And so there's a lot of public speaking in there. And I can still recall the two of them sitting in the back of the room as we would do our public speaking there and do presentations. And try not to be nervous because they had these like poker faces, weren't giving away how you were doing. But you could kind of watch uh, Buck's pencil. He used to count your crutch words. And that's when I first learned I had a bunch of crutch words. I still do. My ums and so's and rights. And uh, if Buck's pencil just moved a little bit, that means he was just making a tick mark about one of your crutch words. If it moved a little bit more, that means he was writing something down with a little bit more specific uh, question or issue. Uh, but I learned a lot in that. Uh, that was really a class that I um, learned how important it was to be able to communicate. It wasn't enough to be smart or have great thoughts or ideas. If you couldn't communicate them, it didn't really matter. And so uh, Mr. Price and Mr. Smith were instrumental in that. In fact, of all the classes over the years, the single most important class may have been that one. Or maybe, I don't know what class you learned to read in, that was kind of important too. Um, but I still think about it and uh, when I go back to edit this video and I catch the ums that are in there, I, I know Buck will be making a little ticky mark. Uh, but they didn't really do it as a mean way, right? I mean, they were just trying to get the best out of us. And one of the memories I have of Buck is uh, from wrestling. Uh, so as I uh, mentioned, his son Mike, um, he had two children, Kelly and Mike. Mike was an uh, incredible wrestler, went to States. And so I knew Mike not only from growing up, but then also wrestling with, with Mike. Anyway, uh, Buck would come to all the matches. Uh, I think he often worked the scoreboard uh, or the clock uh, during home matches and stuff. But we were away, uh, we were at Upper Dublin and I wasn't a great wrestler. Um, and, uh, but I was winning. I was ahead in this match. Uh, it's in the third period and, and you hear a lot of noise, but there aren't always distinct voices. I could hear Coach Smith and some of the other guys on the bench, Mike and so forth. Um, I was getting tired. But the one voice I could make out was Buck in the stands yelling, hang on, Billy Bittner, hang on. Um, and that just, I can hear that as clear as day today. And uh, so I think that was part of what, um, as I look back on, on Buck Price, that uh, as a coach and a teacher, he definitely impacted and influenced folks. But I think in some ways his true calling was cheering on people. Um, definitely even more of that when his grandkids came along. 
and uh, just this joy he had in, in seeing people do well, uh, seeing people do their best. And so uh, definitely he was a role model from, from that perspective and uh, he's definitely missed. So uh, tip of the hat to Buck Price. So if you've had a teacher that has a positive impact on your life, I'd love to hear about it. Drop something down in the description or better yet, reach out to them and let them know that if you haven't already. And uh, God forbid they've passed on, reach out to their family, let them know. Have a good day, y'all. Talk to you soon. Bye now.